this team with the number one overall pick this year drafted Victor Wembenyama, also known as uh, Trent's favorite player when Russell Westbrook is not talked about. Um, but, uh, you know, t- tell me, Trent, you know, what what do the Spurs do moving forward now that they got, as some might say, the greatest prospect ever or at least in a very long time? What do you think? This is going to be a Victor rant, and then I'll get to my points later on, man. Let me ask y'all a question real quick, and just just, just put your thumbs up. Are we tired of all the Victor freaking the Victor love already? They putting this dude all over the freaking everywhere you go, Victor, 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 Victor. Okay, cool, we get it. You understand? He's trying to be the face of the league. He's trying to when LeBron's out of here, we all know that's who your main focus is, Victor. Like we don't care to see your hands, we don't care to see your feet, we don't care none of that. Stop posting all that. I'm tired of all that. Right. And then and then also I feel bad for him. You know why? Um, I'm not I'm sure y'all seen it. Um, I think it was like a like a video shoot where he needs to make a couple of shots. He missed all his shots. Guess what happened? All over the internet, all over the internet. He was getting bashed, and that's more to come. And it was just practice shots. Like these are just warm up, he's just playing around, whatever. Cool, he missed his shots. That just happens, but he is going to get so much hate. If he does not perform how everybody's holding this dude up to. And it's, I hate that for him. It, it's not, it's kind of somewhat similar to like the Lonzo Ball situation in the sense where like, yo, he going to be in the Raptors. He's going to do this and that. His dad putting so much pressure and bam, he still turned out to be a good NBA player, but it's just like, there was so much onto it. And that's what I fear that's going to happen to Victor. Now, going forward, he also has the greatest, one of the greatest coaches in NBA history, Greg Popovich, right? So that's always going to be a positive no matter what. But also, he has people training him like a Tim Duncan, or he has Tim Duncan, Ginobili, maybe Tony Park, I'm not sure. But he has those veteran players who won championships for this franchise in this organization. So that's definitely going to go a far, far way. Um, that's just my Victor rant of, boy, oh boy, you better not – if he the problem is what I feel like, if he's not an all-star this year, he's gonna get bashed no matter what. That's what I personally feel like. He can't just come out there and have like a, a good rookie season. It's not gonna be good enough for a lot of people in the media. And that's gonna be super unfortunate. But going on to this roster, they definitely have a lot of good pieces. And it's gonna be starting obviously with your two big pieces and Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell. Um, Keldon Johnson, I love his play. Obviously, he still has his ups and down, but he's a 22-point scorer, which is his highest this year um, throughout his whole career. Um, field goal percentage is about 45%. His three-point percentage definitely took a hit. Um, from the year before, he was shooting damn near 40. This year, shooting 33, which is a concern to me. Um, but hopefully, that can go back up. Uh, five rebounds, three assists. Those, and, and then, obviously, Devin Vassell, um, who shoots damn near 39% from the three, four rebounds, and 18 and a half points. So, obviously, your big three is going to be Victor, Keldon Johnson, and um, Vassell. Another question I do have about the San Antonio Spurs is you just recently drafted Jeremy Shohan. Um, Jeremy Shohan is a very interesting player. Honestly, me and Jay, I'm not sure if you feel the same way, but he started off the league talking crap about Westbrook. So, I'm going to talk bad on him. All right. Like, bro, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just sorry. But either way, he's a solid piece for this team. But how is that going to all work out? Is he going to continue to come? Is he going to come off the bench? Just because of the fact you're still going to have Zach Collins over there, who I think you have to keep, who is a really good piece over there. Um, Victor, what positions Victor is going to play? So you have a lot of positions over there that's like, how is this all going to work out? I'm pretty sure it is going to work out because you got Pop and Pop don't play. Um, also another player that I've really, really high on is M- Malachi Branham. I'm probably saying his name wrong. Um, Branham. Ohio yeah. state legend, Malachi Branham, man. So they got good pieces over there. They got the best player in the draft and they got supposedly the best player in the next 20 years of the drafting or whatever the case may be. I like their future. I love Greg Popovich. I want him to keep coaching because, you know, his life right now is probably not the greatest just for family perspective. So Victor probably made him come back. In the sense of, I want to coach this group for another five years. And that's going to be a positive thing for the San Antonio Spurs. For agency, it doesn't, you know, they're going to have their free agents and stuff like that. But they're in a position where they're just in rebuilding mode, right? Um, I will talk about Trey Jones. It's an interesting piece. Shout out to Trey Jones. He actually commented under my TikTok video. Uh, but 
Trey Jones is going to be a free agent. Um, Devin, you know, an unrestricted free agent or restricted free agent? Restricted. Restricted free agent. Um, it all depends how much you're going to pay him. Because if, if he's asking for money, don't pay him. But, like, obviously he's going to be asking for money. But if he's asking for, a, a, like, a lot of money, let him go. But if he's asking for a reasonable amount, keep him. He, 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 fits, in, he fits in that uh, system in a sense, and he fits with the young guys. And I think this um, – this, Gabe distracted me. I'm over here reading the chat. My, <laughs> this um, this team is going to be just fun to watch, just because of the fact that Victor's there and they already have young guys over there. So I'm high on them. How much you want to bet when this season starts? The San Antonio Spurs were a team that's never on TV. They gonna be on TV more than my Miami Heat. They gonna be on TV probably more than anybody's team in here right now. I can promise you that. They probably gonna be on the first game of the season, Victor. Victor is going to be placed everywhere. So, man, oh, man, you better perform, my dog. Uh, Trent, you're absolutely right. Um, they are going to be on the t- on TV way more than the Miami Heat. Nobody want to watch that shit. All right, so when it comes to Victor Wembanyama, bro, I'm not going to lie. He's being hyped up just to be – just for the media to tear him down. And I, I really don't like it. The best prospect – Ever the best prospect since LeBron James. Like, we've had so many phenomenal players come into the league, and they're hyping this guy up now. This season was the healthiest and most games, most games he's played in a long time. I'm talking like his entire career. He played 42, I believe, or 45 games, somewhere in that range. And he does have a history of lower body injuries. That's the only thing that worries me. But um, besides that, Victor Wembanyama is a hell of a player, a guy his size that could put it on the floor. He could shoot. He could dominate you in the post. He's automatic at at the rim. And his defense, I believe he's going to be an instant impactful player when it comes to the defensive end. Now, the rest of the Spurs, like Trent said, Devin Vassell is a hooper, got better every single year since he entered the league. Keldon Johnson is a hooper, got better every single year since he entered the league. And I'm really high on Trey Jones. Trey Jones averaged 12 uh, points per game and six assists this year. A lot of people are saying how the Spurs should bring in a veteran point guard. I don't think so. I don't think you rush the process. I say you ride with the young guys, continue to bring young talent on this team and build around Victor Wambayama slowly. I know he said, oh, I want to win championships off the rip. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Your team is ass. Y'all, y'all literally got the number one pick. Y'all are far from that. But with that being said, I like Jeremy Sohan too. Really, really great player, uh, plays with a lot of energy. Going to be a nice fit alongside Victor Wambayama. But – um. With that being said, I, uh, the, the Spurs also have a lot of cap room this offseason now. I think they should bring in a, a, a vets, I would say, really to solidify the foundation of what it's like to be an NBA player and a professional for Victor Wimbanyama and some of these young guys. I'm going to keep it a band with you. I don't know if I'd bring that many people in because, listen, Wimby – whether he is literally the best rookie, one of the best players, literally all-star year one, or whether he gets welcomed to the NBA hard and struggles, they got time. He is a rookie. They got time to be good. He's like the piece. And while other guys that are part of this nucleus, like a Devin Vassell, like a Keldon Johnson, have been around for like a couple seasons, Victor is your guy. And so you give him a couple years and you build around him. He is your timeline. And I think he's going to pan out just fine. I think he will end up being like a good, very good player in the league, bare minimum. I have very high confidence in that. And if you're just really bad this season, what happens then? You get Victor and a new running mate. Now, a couple years down the line, you might say, oh, well, how would you pay all these guys? Well, at the end of the day, it's just who's performing better. And I think at this point, when you're in prime rebuild, acquiring more talent is never a bad idea. I think the biggest thing for them this season is going to be playing Victor and seeing who fits best around him. Because like I said, he is your timeline. He is your foundation. He is your building block. And until he proves otherwise, and like if he turned out to be some crazy bust, well, a couple years down the road, you can discuss that. But as of right now, you do everything in your power to start building around him for the long game. 
And so you're going to see Trey Jones around him. I think Trey Jones is a great playmaker. 6.6 assists on 1.6 turnovers. That is great passing numbers. I think Keldon Johnson, he should probably be at his best when he's not too ball dominant. So, like, if the ball's out of his hands more and in Victor's hands more, I don't think that's a bad thing. Devin Vassell, I don't think his game would really interfere with Victor's much, so I think the fit should be fine. But at the end of the day, you just got to see what happens. Other interesting pieces like a Sohan, like a Branham, really, like I keep saying, it's all just a matter of do they fit well with Victor? And if you're bad again for, like, a two-, three-year plan, do they fit well with Victor and whoever number two it is? <laughs> While a veteran would probably be nice as, like, somebody in the locker room, I think if they can get that guy as just, like, maybe a vet minimum guy, not somebody who's taking off a large share of the minutes, that might be a little bit better. Just so you can show them, you know, how to be in the NBA and just how to kind of carry yourself and more intangible type things. But I don't think you want to be giving older guys a large share of minutes on this team when you're trying to figure out who's going to be here long term of all these young pieces you have. I'm right there with you, Gabe, and especially considering the fact it's not like they're devoid of vets right now. Not that they have a ton, but Doug McDermott's still under contract there for next year. Devontae Graham's still under contract there for next year. So they have a couple of guys who've been around here. Even Keen Birch is still there next year. So they got some vets who have been around, who've been around the league and can mentor some of those younger guys. And like you say, objective number one right now outside of developing Victor is figuring out what you have and who fits around Victor. And there's guys last year even already who weren't getting that much run. I mean, Malachi Branham struggled to get regular minutes. Blake Wesley was out for a lot of the season, and then even when he was healthy, struggled to get minutes. How Sohan gets minutes now is going to be different with Victor coming in. Their second-round pick, Sissoko, is going to have to try and get some minutes as well. So they have young guys already who are going to be fighting for minutes amongst each other. So I don't think you need to bring in anyone significant unless, like you say, you're bringing in someone who's just there to be on the bench and in the locker room. But as far as encore guys, this year's probably not the year. Long-term, especially at the point guard position, that's somewhere they may be looking now. Maybe that's addressed with another future high draft pick, like you alluded to, Gabe. But as good as Trey Jones is, and if you can re-sign him at the right price, you probably do this summer. He's no different than his brother. He's a really good backup point guard. He's probably not a guy you want as your starting point guard as you start to become a competitive team two, three, four years down the line. So as a plug gap starter for now, he's fine. If he's your backup long-term, that's great, but he's probably not your starter long-term and that's fine for now, but that's something they're going to have to figure out moving forward. Uh, The other guys I want to mention most notably are their two other main guys in Kelvin Johnson and Devin Vassell. Devin Vassell is a guy you have to extend no question for me this summer. I don't know if he's your number three movie or your number two moving forward next to Victor, but he's probably a guy who could project in pretty well as a number three. Whether you draft your number two or you trade for your number two, that remains to be seen. But as long as Victor develops well, the Spurs have the hardest part done in their number one. So getting the number two should be a lot easier for them with the pick flexibility what they'll have and with the fact that I think they'll probably move off of Keldon Johnson for said number two option at some point. I like his game, uh, even though you mentioned Trent, like he did struggle from three more last year than he has over the past couple of years. Uh, He did have to be a big shot creator on this Spurs offense last year compared to what he's used to, compared to what he's comfortable with. And that's clearly not his role. And his numbers also look a lot worse because he had a a month where he just couldn't shoot the ball. He he shot 16% from three uh, during one month last year. So that didn't help either. Uh, but long term, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a guy who gets moved. I don't think that's the summer, but it might not be that far down the road that he gets moved off of. And then they look to bring in their second option. But I think Vassell's their guy. Vassell gets locked up at probably 2022 20, mil plus this year. And he's someone that you need as a piece around Victor. Outside of that, like you mentioned, Gabe, there's no hurry. It's Victor's rookie season. The media is going to want the rush. The media is going to want Victor to be an all star and a surefire rookie of the year winner, even though he's going against Scoot and Brandon Miller and Chet Holmgren. And he's going to want him, they're going to want him to lead the Spurs towards a potential play in or even postseason berth this year. But there's no, there's no need for that. Just take their time. This roster as a whole, it's not just Victor, this roster as a whole is very young, is still developing, is still finding themselves. There's no rush 
to make that type of jump. They just need to focus on development. And I'm not worried about a losing culture here because this is Pop at head coach. If they have a losing year or two, I'm not concerned about them becoming last year's Houston Rockets and looking like a very dysfunctional organization and dysfunctional on the court. I trust in Pop to keep them on the right track. And even a couple of years down the road, they should be able to come out of it okay. Yeah. Uh, glad, uh, oh, go ahead. Okay. I was going to say, uh, I'm glad you were talking about Coach Pop there at the end because I kind of wanted to ask you all about him because assume Victor does pan out and he does become this perennial all-star, one of the best players in the league type prospect that he's projected to be. Coach Pop ain't young, bro. He's been around for a minute. And I think that he probably has a couple more years in him. But at this point, how long do you guys see Pop staying around throughout this Victor era? And if so, do you see anything in line in terms of a succession plan, or how do you guys think that goes? Um, I feel like so right now, Pop is seventy-four years old. I think he'll probably go until he's eighty. Like you know what I mean? I think that's probably about as far as he'll go. So that that leaves like a six-year window um, in the Wemby era. So that you're thinking like twenty twenty-nine. By that point, Wemby will be like, what, 25? I mean, at that point, they could put it together. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you, you, what you guys can go, go with what you think on that, and then I'll go with that's, my other stuff after. That's funny you say that because you literally stole the words out of my mouth. I was looking at the same thing. I think, he goes, I think he goes to 80, <laughs> or, or he goes to – he finishes Victor's mm-hmm. contract. Uh, yeah, honestly, I pretty much – Feel the same way. Probably finish up Victor's contract. I mean, I, I, who, who knows if he last three years? I, I don't know. Because let me say this before I let you go, guys. We thought Popovich is going to retire for a while now. It's every single season you hear, ah, oh, he's gone. It's his last year. Now he got this first round pick. It's like a new trophy to him, right? Let's not forget he had David Robinson, I believe. He had Tim Duncan. Now this is his next weapon in the sense of, okay, maybe we can we can win something with, with this. Now I understand he's old. But I brought this up earlier, is that he doesn't have much outside of the NBA. I think his wife died. I don't think he has mm-hmm. anything else. So, like, NBA is his life, you know? And so I think he finishes Victor's, uh, Victor's contract, and let's see what they can do in this in this time frame. So when y'all say Victor's contract, you just mean, like, his rookie contract or the entire time he's there? Probably, okay. like, the first four years is what yeah, they're just saying. Just so think. his rookie contract, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was looking at, yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine it's it's probably somewhere around that in and around the next four to six years. What it looks like after that, who knows? Um, I know a, a Becky Hammond returning to the Spurs has been talked about as someone that re- could replace Pop. Who, I mean, who knows who we'll be looking at as coaching candidates five or six years down the line. I mean, it's that's a long way to predict. And anything predicting anything five to six years down the road in the NBA is an impossible task. We all know that, but... I, I think that's probably about as far as we're looking for Pop, but who knows, man. Like we say, he keeps sticking around year after year at this point. He might be on the court until he physically can't be out there anymore at this rate. So uh, I wouldn't put anything past it at this point. I could see him coaching in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. He loves it. He, he's at um, it. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of um, – I, no, I agree with that. I think the other thing I wanted to add, though, like you were talking about earlier, Devin, about – um. I guess uh, the way that Vassell fits in on this team, I do agree. I think you have to extend him. Um, I think as well, like, I know this year, like, Keldon was kind of like their primary scorer, but I feel like with Wemby as the number one, at least for the time being, we don't know what their core is going to look like five years down the line, like like we said. But I think for the time being, I kind of like Devin Vassell as, like, the number two option instead of Keldon Johnson. I just feel like it makes maybe more sense a little bit to have like a more of a spacing player around Wemby, um, maybe someone that plays more on the perimeter instead of like um, point of attack type of player. But I think that that makes more sense. But also, too, like the good thing about the Spurs is like they have like so much cap room like coming forward compared to other teams. You know, like even this offseason, which I don't think they will just because one, they're not like winning a championship in their first year, um, but also like. If they wanted to, they could trade like Doug McDermott. They could trade Devontae Graham. They could trade Ken Birch. And that would save them like 30 million right there. Even if it's just like a second round pick or like cash or whatever. Like, and they could go after maybe like two big players 
as early as this summer. Now, I don't think they would because this free agency isn't really worth it. But come next summer, you know, you're going to have Vassell start his extension. Keldon's making 19 million a year, but Wemby's still on his rookie contract. You're still going to have a lot of room. Like you could go get someone next summer or even the year after because Wemby's still going to be on his rookie contract. So, like, that's, I think, the upside uh, with the Spurs moving forward. And also, like, guys like Branham um, as well, like Jeremy Sohan. Like, there's a lot of room for them to have a lot of young guys. And especially in the Spurs culture, we know that, like, they're one of the best at developing them, especially Greg Popovich. So, I think moving forward, like, this, they're, they're set up really good. And I wouldn't be surprised if, like, this is a team that, like, jumps up, like, in a in a burst – um, moving forward just because we, we know what that culture brings. And also, like, just because Wemby is, I think, going to be that level of player. But I don't even think, even if he's not an all-star this year, even if he's not, like, um, in the playoffs this year, of course people are going to hate. That's just how it is nowadays, like, more so with social media. Uh, I don't know if it's going to, like, be a career-altering hate just because, like, we've also seen players, like, even LeBron, for example, like, he was one of the most hyped-up players coming into the NBA but he didn't make the uh, playoffs and he didn't make the all-star team as a rookie either. So even if Wemby doesn't, I think there's definitely room there. Um, but I, I think moving forward, like, I mean, they got their guy. I think this might be the best chance for them to win like a draft lottery of the last like couple. Um, I just feel like Wemby is perfect for them. And especially I think guys like Vassell, Keldon Johnson, um, I think they're going to really benefit alongside playing with him. Of course, every decision moving forward is going to revolve around what's best for the team. And most importantly, uh, with Wemben Yama as the number one. So if they have to move on from every, anyone, like those guys might not be on a Spurs in a Spurs uniform by the next time they win their next championship. But I, I think it's I think it's personally they're set for the next whether they wanted to do something this offseason or next offseason. Um, but yeah, if they were going to do something this, this off season, I feel like it'd have to be like a trade in the next like four days, like before free agency or something like with Doug McDermott and maybe like Devante Graham and just find a way to make as much uh, money, uh, available as possible. Try and get like maybe two really quality players around him, but you don't need to do that. Like you said, Devin, you don't, they don't need to even go that far next summer. Maybe they can, you know, think about that a little bit. And even really the summer after, because Wemby's still going to be on a pretty cheap contract, and you still got Keldon locked up for about what seventeen and a half million, and then Devin Vassell probably somewhere around that range too. I mean, and those are like your three quality guys, and maybe you could even get another. So, yep, I agree. Um, last thing I'll probably say about the Spurs is don't be surprised if Victor makes the All Star game this year just for some views. <laughs> 